Hey guys, Culture here. Generally, I like to be pretty objective, see things from both sides, and think about what I can do to make life easier not only for myself, but for those around me. And hey, I like to believe that everybody feels that way. There's a lot of people we have to share this planet with, and I figure, why not make that experience, the experience of life, as easy as possible? But I've realized something as I've grown older. More cynical. Not everybody thinks like me. No, it turns out some people are... Damn, I, I bet Crash would have a good word for them. Let's just say they're less conscientious than me. Less aware of the people around them. Or maybe, and I'm not sure if this is better or worse, they're just too lazy to do anything about it. And nowhere is this more obvious than on the train. Let me break down the whole point of public transport. Ages ago, some people decided, hey, let's put all our buildings in one place so that they're easier to get to, and thus the city was invented. Then someone else was like, hey, let's make a thing which takes a whole bunch of people at the same time into the city, and thus the train was invented. However, at the same time, everyone else was like, hey, let's make more people, and so the baby was invented. <laughs> I may have embellished some of the finer points, but you get the idea. In any case, all these ideas collided because there's no way you can get all those people into the city, so you end up packing them in this confined space and shipping them off like cattle. But I should back up a second. Half the problem with trains happens before you even get on them. Stations are an absolute god-awful mess, mainly because of the stupid escalators. That's unfair of me. The escalators aren't stupid, it's the people on them. Here's a quick tip. Try standing to one side so people can move past you. I especially like this tip because it's applicable to so many situations. Stairs, footpaths, shopping aisles, and yet so many people struggle with this concept. They're trapped in their own little world, a world I like to call the me world. It's a wonderful world in which only the thinker exists, and as long as they are happy, then all is well and good. But the problem with the me world is that there are other people, and they do in fact exist, and they have their own stuff that they want to get done and you standing there slack-jawed in the middle of a thoroughfare, blissfully ignorant of anything else, is infuriating and pointless. But I digress. The point is it literally takes no effort to just stand to one side. I'm here to give you some good news. Both sides of the escalator are equally good. The designers actually made the stairs symmetrical on purpose so that no one felt that they were getting the short end of the stick. Neither side will electrocute you or suddenly give way, dropping you into an abyss. They are both equally sturdy and equally shock-free. So why is it then that people choose to stand on the side that people walk down? Are they hipsters? Do they refuse to conform to social norms? Do they see everyone else standing to one side and think, no, no, I will not become one of the sheeple? Well, if that's the case, the next time I'm sprinting down the escalator hoping desperately to catch the next train because I know if I miss this one, it's a 15 minute wait until the next one, I'll take a special little moment to knock the pumpkin spice latte out of the hand of the person blocking me. And I will feel no regret. Some people who own dogs have a special way of disciplining them. When the dog takes a poop where it's not meant to, they will take the dog and hold its face close to the poop so that the dog knows what it did wrong and knows not to do it again. Now, I think this is cruel. I mean, the poor dog doesn't know any better. But if you're a human and you're dumb enough to block a passageway voluntarily, then I will feel no guilt grabbing your face and holding it close to the spilled contents of your pumpkin spice latte and saying, look what you did, look what you did, bad boy. Oh my god, I, I haven't even gotten on the train yet. Okay, so you deal with the stupid people on the escalators and finally make your way onto the train. Now, thing is, all these businesses in the city had yet another great idea. Let's all end our work days at the same time. So everyone gets on the train at the same time. And it gets packed. I'm talking more people in the train than there are explosions in a Michael Bay film. You're so close, in fact, that by the end of the trip, you come to know the perfume of the person next to you so intimately, it's as if you spent the night together. Or worse, they didn't put on any deodorant at all. Or even worse, they doused themselves in Axe body spray. But hey, that's the reality of the world. They can't help it. We're all in the same boat, and we have to deal with it, so I won't complain too much. But sometimes there's an awkward situation on the train. Sometimes you get stuck with your crotch in somebody's face. And I'm not talking about a successful night out in the town. I'm talking about some stuffy lady who's taken one of those seats meant for the elderly or pregnant women, and you're stuck leaning over her, holding onto one of those yellow straps to support yourself. By the way, those yellow straps have to be the dumbest invention in the world. They always slide around and make weird scratching noises when you put your weight on them that are uncomfortable, and you stand there trying not to put your weight on them to keep it quiet, but it doesn't work, and it's, 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 it's just a mess. Anyway, back to what I was originally saying. So you're leaning over with your crotch like 30 centimeters from this woman's face, and you have no choice because you're backed in by other people, and the guy behind you is trying to get into the Guinness Book of World Records for having the fattest butt. 
So you don't want to touch your butt with his butt because that's a whole other issue. So instead, you thrust your hips forward a bit, putting your spine in the worst possible position, just knowing that somewhere a chiropractor is laughing maniacally, thinking of all the money he's going to make when you turn 50 and your spine gives out on you. And here comes the kicker. The woman gets this expression on her face like she's the inconvenienced one. I'm sorry that you had to deal with this annoyance in your day, and in the future, please let me know if you'd rather swap positions, because I will happily, eagerly oblige. But surely it's my fault, right? I had to get on earlier. I had to get that seat for myself and stake my claim. But no, sadly I care too much about other people to do that. If I took that seat for the elderly and then an older person got on the train, suddenly it's my job to determine whether or not they're old enough to classify as elderly. What if I offer my seat to a woman and she looks at me all offended because it turns out that they're only 55 and still believe they look young? What if I wait for them to ask me for the seat? I mean, I could, but the whole time I'd be sitting there, my mind ticking over, thinking about how that person is standing next to me, probably desperately wanting me to offer them the seat. They probably think I'm rude for not offering the seat. So you've endured the train ride and now you're ready to get on with your day. But there's just one more obstacle. The door. Now how hard can this possibly be? Surely no one can stuff this up, right? Right? Guys? Oh god. Let me outline how the doors work on the train that I use. Hopefully it's similar to most trains around the world. Essentially there's this little green button in the middle of the door. When the train stops there's a sound and a green LED around the button lights up indicating that the button can now be pressed and the door will open. Seems simple, right? Apparently not according to 50% of the people I see every day. They come in different types. Firstly, we have what I like to call the crack addicts. When the train is still 20 seconds away from stopping, they'll stand in front of the door pressing the button repeatedly, looking desperately towards the approaching station. But what they fail to understand is that the door will not open unless the light is on. But hey, at least they took some initiative, unlike this next type of person. I call these guys the blockers. They'll stand at such a distance from the door that they simultaneously prevent anyone else from pressing the button, but they also refuse to press the button themselves. You'll arrive at the station, the light will come on, and you'll look at the blocker expecting some sort of response. And then they just look over their shoulder at you, like you're the one wasting everybody's time. So you have to reach around them to press the button, and there seems to be a trend that if the person is a blocker, then they also have horrible hygiene. So every second spent reaching around their sweaty, gross body feels like an eternity. Now this final type isn't so much annoying as they are... fascinating. I call them the teasers. These people seem to have an odd, uh affinity for the button. They'll stand as close to the door as possible with nearly their whole body pressed up against it. Then they'll put their finger on the button and sort of run it around the surface, learning each and every detail. Or maybe like they're holding their finger up to someone's lips, like, shh, don't worry, don't worry, daddy's gonna take care of you. And it's an oddly sensual act, but at least they end up pressing the button at the station. I suppose the foreplay could only last so long. And by the way, it's not just people on the train who have trouble with the doors. When I get to the station ready to jump off the train, there's inevitably a group of idiots trying to get in the train before anyone has gotten off. And then when they see people trying to get off, they like sigh and roll their eyes and slowly step back. Like they didn't anticipate this. Like this hasn't happened every time they've ever taken the train in their life. It's a lack of thought, pure and simple. When you're in a public space, just try thinking about the people around you, about how you're getting in their way. So in summary, here's my tips for how not to be annoying on the train. 1. Stand to the side of the escalator. I don't care if you're with a friend and you want to stand next to them so you can chat. You can talk to them equally well if they're in front or behind of you as well. There is no excuse for blocking the escalator. Period. 2. Have some basic hygiene. This applies to all of life, not just the train. You don't have to smell like you're a human air freshener, just make sure you cover up your BO. 3. If you want something, ask for it. And be polite about it. Don't ask as if you're entitled to the seat, because here's a nice life tip. You're entitled to nothing. Just asking nicely with a smile will get you a long way. 4. If there is one thing I want you to take from this whole video, it is this point. Don't block people. Don't stand in the middle of a crowd. Don't stand in the middle of a doorway. And don't stand in the middle of a corridor. And one final note. Just because I'm calling these people out on here doesn't mean you can go around doing it in person. If someone does annoy you in public, don't be rude about it. Take a note from point three. Just ask nicely. If you yell at them for being in the way, they're less likely to move. Maybe they just forgot or made a mistake, or they were spacing out. That's fine. We're all human, and we all have our own stuff to worry about, and sometimes we make mistakes. As Will Whedon says, don't be a dick. And now for a call to action which I hope becomes a mainstay in these videos. 
I want you guys to chat about your frustrations and expectations on the topic of this video in the hopes that it will prevent you from bottling up your emotions and erupting on some poor unsuspecting bystander. In other words, vent in the comment section below. Follow Culture Crush on social media!